I'm intending to test one of these vehicles, this this record breaker, Guinness World Record Breaker, I should say, and find out exactly how much range you can get from them in the real world. Now, yes, this test was in the real world, but I want to see what it does when I'm driving it. I don't drive slow. I normally, I mean, I'm not a maniac, but I normally don't drive conservatively. Anyway, this electric SUV broke the Guinness World Record for longest range traveled. And as far as I can tell, they didn't baby it. I mean, they didn't, you know, they didn't drive it like I would, but um, they didn't drive it like these crazy hypermilers do. This is um, a pretty legitimate and impressive record from Polestar. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. The new Polestar 3 long range single motor, it smashed expectations according to thecooldown.com, setting a Guinness World Record after traveling 581 miles on a single charge. It's actually 4.9 meters long, 4,900 millimeters, which is 191.1 inches. It's also 1,970 millimeters wide, which is 76.7 inches. So it's a size up from a Tesla Model Y. It's a next next size up type car. It's um, yeah, certainly not small at all, and it's got um a fair bit of interior space, including rear storage with the seats folded of one thousand four hundred and eleven liters. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's seven thousand five hundred. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. So to me, that makes this record actually even more impressive. The fact that this wasn't some small electric SUV, it was actually a pretty big one. The Polestar 3, it um, took 22 hours and 57 minutes on public roads in the UK to set this record. Not sure why it took so long, but um, anyway, it did. And that is a record for the longest distance traveled by an electric SUV on a single charge ever. It beat the model's official 435 mile range estimate. So its estimate is 435 miles based on the WLTP cycle, which I think is, um, it's actually a really long range vehicle. If you need something to drive a long way, this could be a good choice. Incredibly as well, it wasn't modified at all it was using 20 inch wheels if you reduce those down to 18 inch you'd probably get another potentially 50 miles of range i mean it would make quite a difference according to polestar the vehicle even reached its official range with 20 percent battery still left and this shows how far battery technology is actually coming the cooldown said this and i, I actually agree with them it's a good point the Polestar 3's uh, performance in terms of its actual distance and range helps address one of the biggest concerns about EVs, which is limited range. I should point out, it's true that e electric car range is on average increasing every year, not for every model, but in general across the industry, it's getting longer and longer. With more EVs being equipped for longer driving distances, for example, this year, the Tesla Model Y the long-range all-wheel drive, one of the most popular versions of the Model Y. Tesla bring out the new version, yeah? It has 544 kilometers of WLTP range. A few months later, they updated and it now has 600 kilometers of WLTP range. And the big version, the Model Y L, has the same 600 kilometers of range as well. And there's many other brands doing similar things. For example, the car that I own, the XPeng G6, that has 570 kilometers of range, and it's a fair bit cheaper than the equivalent Tesla. So there's a lot of options now. For those who do switch to an EV, these savings and perks will stack up over time. For me personally, I've saved huge amounts of money driving an EV. Remember, there's no oil changes, less routine maintenance, and cheaper fueling. Now getting back to the Polestar 3, here in Australia, some, actually, some people actually tested the Polestar 3 in Western Australia and they saw how much range they could get. Now, I actually lived in Western Australia for two years, and I lived quite close to where they drove this car, which is a, a staggeringly beautiful part of the world. There's some really good surf breaks down there. Now, during their journey, they drove 1,755 kilometers in the Polestar 3, 
in some very rural isolated areas around Margaret River, Pemberton, Albany, and Esperance, and even Kalgoorlie as well. And apparently a common question they got asked was this, are you actually getting anywhere near the claimed 706 kilometers of range of the Polestar 3? So that's what its WLTP rating is, 706 kilometers. Now they didn't get anywhere near the claimed WLTP range, but they drove the car at high speeds, highway high speeds, almost all their drive did some off-road driving as well on dirt and even on sand so it wasn't really a fair test they said that at no point did they see a predicted range higher than 450 kilometers in total some days they struggled to get to 400 kilometers but um like i said if you're going to drive at over 100 kilometers an hour and if a lot of your driving is going to be on dirt and sand as well then your range is not going to be anywhere near what you would expect if you're doing combined highway and city driving. And that's the thing with electric cars, right? You'll find that um, if you drive them in stop-start traffic in cities, they'll often outdo their range, which you can't do in a petrol car. In a gasoline-powered car, you'll never outdo your range in terms of getting a more efficiency in stop-start city driving, which is what most people do. Most driving is done in cities, yeah? I mean, literally more than 80% of the world's driving is done in cities where EVs would be a huge advantage, not just for pollution terms, but in, in terms of efficiency. Highway driving EVs are generally, you're generally going to get about 20% less range than you would in city driving. But it really does depend on a few things. How much tire pressure you have in your, your tires, you really want to pump them up as hard as you can. Well, not as hard as you can, but you know, not too far off it. And also it depends on how fast you're going. There's other things like wind speed, are you driving into a headwind? Uh, there's a fair few factors that come into play. And other things also you might not re realize, like the quality of the road. If you're driving on a nice, smooth road, you're going to get a lot more range than if you're driving on a really coarse chip road. But either way, it's really good to see because we're seeing EV range increase every year. And even if you're not going to hit the full WLTP or the full EPA estimated range on the freeway, in mixed driving, you'll find most EVs get pretty close. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching. Fantastic news here for Polestar. Great numbers from Polestar. Sales up by 51% worldwide. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. If you'd like to join our email newsletter, you get one email telling you what the videos are for that day. I'll put a link in the description below. Polestar closed the first half of this year, the first six months, with a big boost in sales, despite declining business in the United States because its cars are made in China. Worldwide sales increased by 51% to 30,300 units. In the second quarter, 18,000 vehicles were sold, an increase of 38%. Interestingly though, um, the second quarter was much better than the first quarter of the year. The car manufacturer's share price has reacted to this result with an increase of around 6% overnight.